All right, uh, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to start with the next talk with Rupert Brenny about pushing the uh, about responsive design for desktop, tablet, mobile, and beyond. Enjoy. Thank you. I'm very, thank you. That's very kind of you. Um, I just want to give you a warning. If you weren't nice to me, this is a university-grade laser pointer. I think this is <laughs> escape from the physics department. Um, I'm, I'm going to start this with a bit of fun. Anybody got a mobile phone in their pocket? We'd like to kind of wave it around a little bit. Quite, quite a few. Two of you. That's fantastic. <laughs> um, anybody got an Apple phone? Okay, just hold it very steady. Right. There's one there. There's one there. Okay. Ooh, that's not a good sign, is it? Let me. Uh, I need my caffeine at this point. It might be. Oh, dear God, here we go. Oh. <laughs> We're talking about viewports. This is nice. This is portrait <laughs> mode. Hope you like this. Um, any help from you guys? I'll tell you what I'll do. We've got something called caffeine, which you might know. Let me see if that stops my thing going to sleep here. Oh, perfect. Thank you. Uh, this is how you do a presentation. You get all the mistakes out early, and then everybody thinks you're incredibly slick. Okay, still not happening. Um, the other secret to a good presentation is uh, it gives them a sense of anticipation. And I would like to announce we're going to do a little product launch here later. It's in the bag. I'm not going to show you what it is until about 20 minutes from now, so you can hold your breath till then, and you might get a surprise. So... Google, you might have heard of them. Um, not the most famous for responsive design, but I hope to put that straight just now. Um, it's a big discussion point in the industry. A lot of people are talking about it. A lot of people are doing it. Um, I'm actually very excited to see uh, Microsoft are coming out with a completely redesigned site, uh, I think, in the next couple of uh, weeks. And the mock-ups I've seen look fantastic. And I think the industry really will kind of uh, stand up and take notice when somebody of that caliber starts doing this kind of a thing. So um, you've all got mobile phones. You all browse on your phones, I guess. Um, and you probably have that same thing I did, where just the frustration of these crappy websites that don't work right, you lose the content, the videos don't play, you know, all this crazy stuff going on. How do we avoid a lot of that? Well, hopefully I'll give you some pointers. I'll give you some take-home uh, tips, hints, some actual code. I'm going to do some live coding later, so uh, this thing, I feel like it's going to blow up if I get some validation errors or something. <laughs> um, so we'll see if uh, you're still laughing at the end of that. So here's us. Oh, come on. All right, let me try that again. <laughs> That's right. Oh, here we go, bit of a lag. Oh, I think I'm out of battery or something. Um, there's another one. I'll try this. This, this works too, right? Um, I've, I've put this slide in for a bit of comedy value. This is... <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> okay. I'm a, I'm a webmaster for the uh, engineering office in uh, Zurich, and there's a couple of colleagues uh, in the room just now. This is why I'm slightly nervous, because I usually start with this joke. One of these Google webmasters has got a Porsche. Attention to detail question. Which one is it? <laughs> I think you can all tell. We made a lot of fun when he bought this thing, uh, but we all queued up for a go around the car park <laughs> when he was giving us lift. Oh, <laughs> oh, thanks. Who was that? I'm going to blame Kensington for that one. Okay. So, on a serious note, there we go. Um, th this is our office. There's about a, a thousand of us now. Uh, we're taking CVs, we're always hiring, do come and say hello. Um, but it, it's a serious engineering office, we have a lot of uh, talent there. We have um, a lot of unblurred faces, we do a lot on Street View, we do a lot on Maps. Uh, we do uh, a modest amount of web design, there's 15 of us here. And we've had a sort of a, a specific interest in mobile, mobile support and responsive for the last year or so. So we did a kind of prototype to this uh, workshop this time last year, which was a little rough around the edges because I'd done one responsive page and the rest was bullshit. 
but I've actually got websites to back it up now, which I'm sure you'll be pleased of. So the title of this talk, if it ever comes up, oh. <laughs> there we go. Mobile friendly sites. I, I used to call this mobile websites. And the reason I don't do that anymore is it's not just about mobile anymore. It's about tablets. It's about the Galaxy Note. It's about tiny little phones. It's like huge, enormous phones. Uh, it's about the iPhone 4, whatever that comes out, whatever size the screen is going to be. You have to be resolution agnostic, fully independent. It's just you never know where your website is going to show up. You've just got to try and make sure it works. So where have we come from? And where are we going to? Oh. So I start this one. Future audience is not on this device. It might not surprise you to learn. This looks uncannily like my first computer. I was so proud of this thing. And the thing with the monitor, this is the real sort of take on point from this 800 by 600 pixels, which you can feel the pixels going past your ears when you kind of pump that thing up. Uh, it took about 10 minutes to start as well. But I paid 120 pounds to go from a 14-inch screen to a 15-inch screen. No extra pixels, and I, I worked that out. That's five pounds per millimeter. And now we're excited when we have a, a four and a 4.3-inch screen at sort of double the resolution of this thing, which is just still astounds me. It's absolutely crazy. Um, it used to be easy. We had this four by three, everybody had the same thing, and you could design a website to fit that. Got more complicated. Uh, some of you have probably got some of these. I see some iPads. Um, oh, I can always forlornly look for a Galaxy Tab or something, but I'll let that one pass. Um, whenever I see a sort of render like this, I just want to cover it in greasy fingerprints. You know, it's far too pristine. Um, we've got to cater for all of these devices, and that's not an easy thing to do, but there are some very simple pointers for it. Um, you're not supposed to read your slides out. This is one I will read. I think it's worth uh, repeating. Mobile devices, smartphones, and tablets are our fastest growing visitor segment. Do you all have uh, analytics on your websites? Pretty much? Are you, uh, are you looking at your user agents, your mobile devices? There is a mobile tab there uh, just now. It's well worth checking out. We're still building site layouts like it's 1999. So that maybe isn't table layouts anymore, but it probably is fixed layouts. That's not a good thing. So what do we do? Well, we should be utilizing mobile compliant best practice techniques to ensure the optimum user experience, and make a habit of testing our new pages. We don't often do that ourselves at narrow widths and on a variety of devices. If anybody doesn't agree with that, there's a window or a door, please take it. So how have we gotten there? Well, I think we always saw mobile users as second-class citizens. We had this image of people rushing around. They were jumping into taxis or checking their share prices or their flight departure time or something. But it was, uh, it was in short, sharp bursts. They weren't needing a lot of information, and they were probably data constrained. It was one of these very scarce resources. And that may have been true five years, 10 years ago. It's definitely not true. And I regret to inform you that the reality of modern mobile browsing is a little more like this. Grumpy team won't do the dishes, but seems to have plenty of time to assume this horizontal position and do a lot of browsing. Um, not data constrained, not really concentrating on the television, not really concentrating on the device, but that's how people are consuming their media now. And if your website doesn't work in this scenario, well, you're, you're missing eyeballs, basically. Um, but that juxtaposition, it got me thinking. We've seen this movement towards ready access to you know ubiquitous internet cpus are getting faster the screens resolutions are getting higher if you draw the lines on the graphs there is just one inevitable conclusion the future of mobile you know th this is three-year-olds playing grand theft auto on a samsung phone i've got to warn you get a parental lock in these things while you still can I, I put this up and we we had this thing for some teachers doing some teacher training and uh, a guy said yeah you know what I have a three-year-old, and she is changing settings on my iPad that I don't know how to change back again. <laughs> They're so comfortable with this stuff. So here's a, has anybody heard of this website, Noir Track Santa? Ah, oh, okay. Have you got kids, sir? 
okay, they probably sort of pulled you in and, and watched this thing. This is probably, it, it's actually one of the bigger websites that Google does, and people don't even know it's us, which is a bit upsetting. Um, this thing got 75 million page views in the month of uh, December last year. And we have a cute little thing. You have uh, Earth in a browser, or you can download it. Uh, you basically get to track Santa Claus as he flies around the world delivering presents. And he, he actually stops in Zurich, I think, because there's an engineering office here. But it's a fun thing, and you definitely should do it with your kids. Um, I've been the webmaster on this for uh, three years. This is my fourth year now. And um, I've always been fascinated by the statistics. And the statistics were 2% mobile users, 2008. I think that was probably when the, um, the iPhone had just come out. The iPad hadn't. Uh, a 2% bump year on year, not terribly big. That kind of felt comfortable. OK, we know they're out there. If you really, if you zoom in on the, sp the specific, when you see the Americans come in on Christmas Eve, start opening Christmas presents, you get all these rich kids tearing off the wrapping of their iPads. And then suddenly, you just see this iPad bump at a very specific time on Christmas Eve. It's uncanny. You can hear the money jingling. Um, <laughs> This is when you notice it's not going up 2%. This is doubling now. So we're, there's something kind of exponential about this. We've got to do something. We have to make this site responsive, particularly because it's the kind of thing that you can basically put Father Christmas in your pocket and just take it out, quick check, and away. And then, oh, where is he now? Is he coming soon? And back. So <laughs> it's a perfect use case for mobile. We finally had a responsive layout on this thing uh, last year. And I'm very glad we did because we had 18% of our visits. So we're basically talking 50 million page views from uh, mobile devices. And OK, that's unusual given the kind of the gets a lot of press coverage in the, in the US specifically. But um, it's, you know, 18% is only going to go up from there. We've seen websites since then. Um, a lot of the pages that were launched around IO for a whole month were getting 50% of their hits from mobile. So we've, we've got to take this stuff seriously now. So. On that note, I'd like to share this charming image with you. Um, has anybody heard of testing on the toilet? It's like a, it's maybe a little bit niche. Somebody at the back has. Um, we have this. It's sort of a joke thing at work. Uh, you know, get the most out of your workers. Sit down in the toilet. There's a little A4 sheet of programming hints in the back of all the toilet toys. And they sort of change it every couple of weeks. Uh, we call it testing on the toilet. I advocate another testing on the toilet. And that is, if you are generating web content and you want to make sure it's accessible and useful to people, you need to make sure it's visible on this size of screen with one thumb from a sitting position like this. <laughs> and ideally with your trousers around your ankles. And then that's the case study. That's your <laughs> user profile right there. So what do I propose? I think there's three simple rules that I advocate. And I think they're pretty contentious, but please, I'm very willing to hear feedback on this stuff. I would suggest that all web pages should render legibly on mobile devices. Why not? They're powerful enough now. Chances are the browser and your phone have better support for CSS than your desktop device back home now. Uh, we write content once and you can view it anywhere. Well, why? Um, you've got loved ones, you like holidays. Many of you are living in this beautiful uh, Swiss countryside, and uh, I, I think we should spend more time in it. I don't want to write things twice and have a mobile-specific version and, and a, a separate version, and trying to keep them in sync is just crazy. So the push towards responsive is don't do it twice. There is an argument to be made for having mobile-specific websites, and we'll kind of touch on that, but I think for the vast majority of what we do, not necessary. Uh, and the third one, and this really is my, my big test, any website, never show a horizontal scroll bar, regardless of screen size, unless you've got a whole thing. You're doing something like gallery or carousal or something, and you can um, move back and forth. But uh, uh, for the most part, I don't sleep at night. If I have a horizontal scroll bar, it's a mark of fail. Never have those. So um, I'll, I'll show you a couple of examples. So this is uh, some of the stuff I've worked on over the last year. Um, OK. So when I talk about responsive, um, to be honest, it's just a fancy new way of 
charging your clients more for something we used to call liquid layout. Um, here's an example of that. This, is, uh, this was a simple one to do. This was just a one page download uh, page for Picasso. Um, and the beauty of that, if you look at the column size, you'll see a little bit of magic going on there. Um, the images are actually background CSS, so you see the cropping change slightly. And then we hit a certain point, and uh, we will be talking about the magic of media queries uh, very shortly. Uh, but you can see we have this uh, stacking or linearization of the, the page elements. And that's more or less what it looks like on a mobile phone, unless you turn it horizontally, and then you get kind of little teeny tiny columns, which are still just about readable. Um, but that's it in a nutshell. You know, nothing too complicated. Um, there's a few simple kind of gotchas to watch for when you're coding a page like this. It's not rocket science, thank goodness. Um, here's one of my favorites. This is something we launched uh, about six months ago, and it basically represented a sort of stepping up our game in terms of what we can do with the kind of look and feel. It's sort of difficult to see at this size, but we have this nice tiling pattern. Everything is kind of responsive. We actually because of these different mixes of tiling sizes, we kind of worked out a grid that sort of sat nicely, and we actually had it in a spreadsheet. So if we wanted to change these numbers about, we would just change the kind of container size, and it would recalculate some um, percentages based on how many pixels you wanted it within the container. But we have this whole thing that will resize nicely when you move down. Um, we have kind of little cute little things, like instead of getting this two line when the content would sort of wrap and push down, we use a CSS overflow thing just to go to ellipses when the text breaks the container. And then again, we go small enough. There's a little bit of animation there. There's a lot of graphics. This is the desktop site you're getting. And then when we go extra small, we have it going to this sort of look and feel here, where we have these smaller tiles. They're actually smaller graphics to download, uh, which is great for mobile because you don't want somebody paying a franc just to look at your web page. I've heard some horror story about some of these pages. The, the DOM is so complicated that when they render on your mobile device and there's enough JavaScript kicking off, you lose 1% of your battery just to look at one page. I mean, it's just it's crazy. But you know, you, you're thinking about what you're doing. You're going to burn a hole in your pocket because the CPU is going crazy. And uh, oh, it's, it's nuts. But th this is a nice little uh, cheat here. Um, one thing I'd sort of, in case I forget this later, these are background CSS. So we can swap that in and out with the media queries as well. So we'd only ever load one set of these images for, for this resolution. Um, and you would never really sort of resize it large or on a, on a portrait mode device. So it's, it's a nice way of sort of insulating people from these surprisingly large downloads. And then this is probably our most high profile one. We did a recent relaunch of uh, Earth. I'm sure you've heard of. Um, oh, come on now. There we go. So the, the an interesting story behind this was, ooh, we actually had a very complicated page. There was a ton of graphics. And the thing that the client loved was we had three separate buttons to download, which seemed like overkill. And you wouldn't believe the amount of pushing we had to do to convince them to get a bit of white space and a bit of breathing room on this page and one download button. And the happy end to the story was uh, downloads went up 14%, which was phenomenal, because it was just less sort of visual noise and clutter. So this is much simpler than what we used to have, but there's a little bit of kind of a touch fodder. So um, talking about carousels, we have a simple one that kind of triggers on, um, on a, well, it's a hover uh, in this instance, but it'll work nicely on a touch. We're listening for a, an on touch as opposed to a, a click event. So it's just, it's very responsive on um, on a tablet, uh, I encourage you to try it, earth.google.com. Um, and this sort of carousel thing, where sometimes see these little dots at the bottom which get lost a little bit on mobile devices, just having these big fat plus buttons there, um, it's really obvious when you load it up. Um, and then the flip side, these are quite large images, they're beautiful images, they're great kind of um, selling points for the product. But again, that starts getting expensive and it takes a lot of screen real estate and so they just disappear when we get to narrower sizes. So it's not so exciting, but you know we get the basics in there, which is what counts. Um, the, the, actually, good case in point here, this navigation isn't quite where we want it just now. We're working on some toggling and expanding. And so there's, um, there's a few different experiments we're kind of playing with there, but um, that's gonna get a little more interesting too. Uh, and again, 
slightly more responsive pages and then hiding images when you potentially don't need them again. That's uh, Okay. Right, so uh, this is where it gets a bit scary. This is where I have to do some coding. Um, I'm going to do two parts to this. One is going to be a quick debug of a page that doesn't quite work responsively. Uh, and then the second part is coding a page from scratch. Um, and I'll do that slowly because it's going to take me a while to kind of remember everything. So you'll have plenty of time to take notes. Um, so here, here's one we, uh, we wrote earlier. resize this here so it looks fine um, difficult to see there's a this is a sort of a tint over in the left hand side the kind of text sits on top of this sort of nice illustrative graphic kind of uh, it's, it's quite a pleasing page element the problem is well you don't really see anything at that point and then we get to the stage this is the dreaded horizontal scroll bar that uh, we definitely want to get rid of there so what's why is it there really simple way to check is you just do a command A and select everything on the page. And then anything that sort of bumps out the sides is probably the bit that's kind of pushing out there. And so it's a really kind of quick and dirty way of uh, checking. And right enough, it's this text in here. So let's dig a little deeper. And uh, we're using the uh, inspect element tool. Really nice little, yeah. So any DOM element on the page you can click on, it'll give you a little. Uh, sort of dialogue down the bottom and you can interact with it just live on the on the page. Oh, come on Chrome, don't fail me now. Let's have a go. Oh, you know what? I just in case there were performance issues, I turned off a lot of my extensions yesterday. Perhaps I've disabled uh some sort of developer mode or something. <laughs> this is great. It, it, it's lovely when people laugh during your presentations, not at your presentations. <laughs> oh, okay. I have a horrible feeling we might have to skip this bit because from memory, where would this be? All right. Oh, I didn't hear that. <coughs> Can you mute the microphones in this side of the room? Uh, you know what, I'm, I'm not going to dig there. I think we could get a little bit lost. Suffice to say, um, you can get a com complete breakdown of the DOM elements on your um, browser. You can see all the CSS rules are being applied to them. It's pretty much the same thing you get with Firebug uh, on the Firefox. Um, we basically hired the Firebug developer, and he's written some great stuff for Chrome. Um, but you <laughs> That's all right, isn't it? I <laughs> I can say that because I sent him money before we hired him because I was so grateful he made my life so much uh, more pleasant. So, so good, good for the indie developer. But if you like a paycheck, it's like everybody else. Um, uh, okay, so you can do all sorts of things. You can even drag DOM elements around. It's absolutely phenomenal. If you've got Chrome uh, on your device, I do play around with this stuff because it's an incredibly powerful debugging tool. And there's some great online resources <laughs> that I'll suggest you check out just to prove that that is the case. So, where were we? Light guy. Ah, oh, the irony. It's never like this at home, is it? actually managed to close the window okay you can actually follow along if you want to um, look at some of these code examples more detailed um, I'm actually serving this currently from brahenicom slash responsive you may be see up there then again if you're surfing stop because this has just <laughs> killed it this might be a good time to pull something out of the bag while I'm waiting for this thing to happen. Uh, is, do people have internet connections just now? They do? Oh, just me then. Okay. Um, I'll see if that happens. Um, here's a new iPhone 5. Do you like it? 
You, you heard it was going to be a bit bigger, didn't you? Um, you know about the viewport? The viewport is basically the window through which you get to look at your content. Um, traditionally, we have a desktop viewport, which is your, oh, okay. Oh, that is slow. Somebody torrenting just now. <laughs> this isn't good. Okay, and we're back. Do, do, do. Oh, okay. This might be all right. I think once this is loaded, it's going to be okay. But um, if it happens again, may I? Be great. Thank you. One second. Okay, thank you very much. My glamorous assistant, ladies and gentlemen. All right, so talking about the viewport tag, I don't know if you can see the difference between uh, these two views of uh, a similar web page. Um, this, everything is teeny tiny text because they've taken a website and they've shrunk it down to the resolution of the mobile screen. This is a version which has it zoomed in all the way and it's this sort of narrower shape. So this is basically the old paradigm of the desktop where it's a big, wide, horizontal thing. Um, 1280 by 720 pixels is still more or less uh, the most common viewport um, we discovered to our disadvantage in one very prominent launch. Um, there's one extra cheeky pixel from uh, Explorer, so you get 1,007 pixels usable in screen space. Um, so I, I would, you're starting to see websites that are larger than that. Don't, don't do that, it's just it's annoying. Um, this is the other viewport, the portrait mode. And so you have this very strange situation now where you would get a, an iPhone 4 with this very high pixel density, sort of twice the, the kind of resolution you would expect to see on a you know, a, a laptop screen. And so they're almost equivalent for, well, certainly my old uh, 800 by 600 computer. Um, I think this currently is 960 by 640, but it reports as smaller, and this kind of factors in when you're telling it to kind of show stuff on the screen. We'll talk about resolutions a little bit later as well. Um, you wanna see what's in my bag? No, oh, yeah. <laughs> screw you. Um, <laughs> Okay, I, I spent a long time doing this yesterday because I discovered in the paperless office, it's very hard to find a pair of scissors or some glue. <laughs> but I persevered. Kids today, copy and paste, they, they don't appreciate where that comes from. That used to be a real thing. You know, I read some blog about the iconography we use. Half of the kids today, they've never seen a floppy disk. I went back to give a talk to my old school and the teachers take in these three and a quarter inch floppies, whatever size they are, uh, just to show the, the students, because they don't see them anymore. It's all thumb drives are, are in the cloud, but uh, yeah, our, our images are changing. Or maybe I'm just an old fart, I don't know. Um, here's a web page. You may or may not recognize it, one of our scintillating hardware products that uh, the press is so fond of. Um, that's pretty much what it looks like. On a web browser, you might recognize this browser. <laughs> If you don't have it, I recommend it. It's got a fantastic Inspect Elements school. <laughs> Here's how a browser interacts with a web page. I'm doing this because I read, I spent an afternoon reading blogs on viewports and it was murder. My head was spinning. I was seeing stars and for a fleeting two minutes of my life, I had this sort of moment of enlightenment and I understood what they were and I lost it. And I lost it until I started doing cardboard cutouts. And now I sort of understand them again. So hopefully I can share that knowledge with you. Um, here's my lovely Chrome browser. Here's my lovely Chrome page. Look at me. I'm interacting with content. It's all right, isn't it? Scrolling. Might have heard of that. Um, interestingly, Apple are now hiding scroll bars and everything as they move towards touch. Uh, that's an uh, interesting uh, treatment of visual affordances. Okay, so I promise you a new product launch. Um, some of you, I think you've seen the uh, the Nexus 7, right? Okay, have you seen the leaked? Oh, found it well done. Bonus points, definitely. <laughs> Give that man a job. Um, anybody seen the leaked Nexus 8 photographs yet? Can it went, the Nexus 7 couldn't be like an iPad. Lawyers don't like that. Had to go a bit smaller. Um, I don't think anybody's going to mistake that for an iPad. What do you reckon? Bigger. Hello, can you hear me? Okay, this is our mobile browser. Um, and traditionally, ooh, excuse me. 
browsing isn't terribly nice on these devices. So you've got up and down, your left and right. You don't quite know where to look. It was very complicated, and it just it wasn't a nice experience. Um, really, this should be about half the size, and you'd realize, you know, it's like a little peephole that you should be looking in. It's it's not a fun way to interact with content. So. The iPhone, when it was launched, did a very, very, very nice thing because it had a great mobile browser, uh, Safari browser, and they decided this very clever thing. They weren't going to give you this little tiny peaky hole into your content. They were going to zoom the content out. This is where it's kind of a big room. I really need these much bigger. You can see the web page, but at a distance, and you're kind of rendering it at this weird sort of sub-pixel level. So the content is there. You can't read it. Even at these high rates. Oh. <sighs> Somebody doing this to me. It's like a wind-up. <sighs> Letters and numbers. Let the, oh. <sighs> oh, XGA. It's my favorite format. OK, good. We're back. Um, there goes my train of thought. Where were we? OK, iPhone. Great browser, great phone. Love it. Uh, this is what it did. You double tap, you zoom in. You can zoom out, have a look around, pinch and zoom, all that kind of good stuff. And then you zoom back in again. And it, it's not a bad solution to the problem. Uh, and interestingly, Apple have stuck with that ever since. Their kind of company line is, our mobile browsers render pages so well. We'll happily add a lot of beautiful CSS3 animations, but we're damn well not going to make them responsive. Um, thank goodness for Microsoft. Don't quote me. Um, it can be better than this. Let me see. OK, so any page that has this tag on it, and again, you, 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 there's links. You can. I mean, this is on the web. You, you can grab this later. I'll, I'll make sure I send the link again. Um, this basically tells the browser that, to all intents and purposes, don't pretend you're a desktop browser and try and show everything at your funny pixel size. Just show me a 12 pixel letter at 12 pixels. Unless you're on a double density resolution device, now render it 24 pixels, but that's a whole different story. But it basically says, show me at my native resolution. And what that means is a website that did look like this, should look like this. You like that? It's a transition. Um, it's linearized, it's stacked. That's if you've done it right. But the important thing is you should be able to see uh, the whole of the web page without that awkward kind of back and forth. Um, just one nice, tall, uh, single directional scroll bar, which we all know and love so much. So that was, uh, that was my afternoon yesterday. I hope you liked it. So workshop. So we, we can run this as a workshop. Um, there are some good links here to this code that I'm going to demonstrate to you just now. Did I leave my cheat sheet on my living room table? I really hope not. Uh, no, I didn't. OK, here, here's my secret weapon. Always print it out. Ooh. <laughs> oh, crazy. So I'm going to show you a few sort of tips here. Um, when you're looking at web pages, there's all sorts of things that can crop up. A good example here is the content is escaping horizontally. We have this issue where the viewport is too small for the content. This thing's popping out the side. Basically, somebody set the body uh, size on this as slightly too large. So if we're going to start from first principles, I actually want to share with you any TextMate users. Um, oh God, any Vim Emacs users? I'm real hard. Yeah, okay, there was a few. Whew, wow. So this is my web page. And this is the kind of thing you'd probably expect to get from a client. Um, this is where I like to get content. You're not thinking about the layout. It's, it's you know, it's just, it's clean, it's pure. It's, uh, Basic, simple, semantic markup with a bare minimum of any additional comments or IDs, which you don't really come after when you're starting to do a page layout. So what I'd sort of draw your attention to is there's an iframe on here, because everybody likes cat videos. Um, nice 
heading, got an H1 there, keep, uh, keep things semantic for a bit of search engine optimization. And um, we have some, I think you can tell where I'm going with this, uh, the bright amongst you will have noticed this column class. What happens next, do you think? Um, we have these three blocks here. Uh, I think pretty much that's the only class I have anywhere uh, in this markup. Um, the one thing I would draw your attention to is a last class, and we'll use this as an extra hook uh, later. So let me show you how I would start to lay this page out. Uh, here is it rendered. Um, and I'm going to, this is interesting, if there are, again, if there are any Chrome users by the end of this talk, this is a nice little trick I use. Um, somewhere in your settings, I think it's in your application support on a Mac, or it's down there somewhere on a, on a PC as well, um, your browser will have a custom.css. And this is like your user, uh, you know, specific stuff that takes precedence over anything that's on a page. What's good about it is you can live code on this and your browser updates without you having to save and refresh and da da da. So we just kind of speed things up a bit. Um, when you're laying a page out, we, we have some CSS guys here, right? Guys and gals. Yeah, you know, okay, good. Welcome, you're in the right room. Um, what's the first thing you do when you're trying to achieve a, a layout? You're shy, I know, you're just in front of a computer all day. I understand that. <laughs> um, colors, of course, you want to see what you're doing and at the moment it's kind of a little bit invisible. So you want to see how your inlines and your blocks and your inline blocks are working. So uh, pretty much the first thing I'll ever do is add some nice colors. Okay, so I don't know if you saw that. I did a quick save and it immediately updated this uh, window on the left. Whoa, that doesn't look yellow, does it? <laughs> That's, uh, oh. Now, I'm, I'm not taking the blame. It's yellow on this. If you don't believe me, you can come and look later. Um, I just like to see what I'm doing. So, if we have a yellow body, let's do something in HTML as well. Because you can do you, all of these sort of um, styles. Uh, you can do a lot of interesting things on the HTML element. You can see this sort of uh, default um, padding within there already. And then just for the sake of argument, we've got these columns which we're going to use for layout. So I'm also going to add something here. Okay, so you see our, our main kind of areas we, we are going to be able to interact with. We have the green, which is the HTML in the background. We have the yellow, which is the body, which is where we're going to start playing around with the width. And we have these columns, which are the complicated bits. So we'll, we'll kind of wrap those up at the end. Um, but yes, I do like my colors. I used to use borders, but uh, if you put those on, they can sort of change the layout a little bit. And there's unintended consequences. So just a flat background color is probably the best bet. Uh, now, as soon as you start floating elements, you sometimes get issues with clearing, clear fixes and stuff. And so I'm just going to, sake of a uh, good housekeeping, I'm going to drop an extra one in here, which is uh, clear both, which will probably save me from embarrassment a little later, even if you can't see anything just now. So what was the first thing we could do? Well, we wanted uh, to limit the size. You can get to a point where you know, these dizzying resolutions, there's just too many words per column. It's not too bad here just because of this, I think we're at, what, 1024. But uh, potentially you can have, uh, you know, we've all got widescreens. You know what it's like. First of all, problems, the lines are too long. Um, let's fix that now. So here's how people used to do things. They would add a width, do, do, might even spell it right eventually. Um, And so not a lot has changed just now, but if I kind of expand this out a little bit, hopefully you'll see. Okay, so the content is now just in this smaller chunk. Uh, I was going to say down the middle. It's not down the middle. I need to fix that just now. Um, but this is kind of the thing we're going for. I probably wouldn't make it 640 pixels in real life, but just so we can see what we're doing on this. Um, let's add those rules. So I'm sure I'm not teaching you anything at this point. Okay, so that's centering. We just have this automatic margin on the left and right. And so we have the content nicely in the middle. 
whatever the screen size, except what just happened. Okay. Thank you. You're my best friend. I love you, man. <sighs> okay, so how, how do you get away? You know, the, the curse of the horizontal scroll bar. Really, really easy. So, um, the one thing, this is, uh, I know you like tattoos. Here's your next tattoo. I want you to say, never use width when you can use max width. Maybe truncate it a little bit. Never use a height when you can use a min height. Basically, never use a width full stop, except for when I'm going to tell you the other way of doing it. But um, <laughs> the rule is the max width stops it at a certain size, but it allows you to shrink it down from there. Um, so if I demonstrate that on this page, that simple fix of going to max width should have no discernible difference when the viewport is wide enough, but when it gets smaller, there you can see it all kind of wrapping up and the text doesn't escape out. There's no horizontal scroll bars, which I'm always very happy about. So that, that's such a simple thing. If there's one thing that's breaking your layouts on mobiles just now, it is fixed pixel widths uh, and possibly heights, but that, that's slightly less uh, usual. Um, you can go home if you like. Uh, it, it sounds silly. That will solve maybe 75% of your issues, honestly. Um, however, there are uh, some knock-ons to that. So um, th this weird one at the bottom here, this is probably getting less and less important. This is a CSS syntax hack. I used to kind of, didn't like to do the syntax hacks. They're actually kind of useful if you're, um, you do still need to kind of get some of these things and not keep separate style sheets. I mean, this idea of you can put conditional comments into your markup, problem with that is it's, it's a permanent fix in your HTML for something that's a temporary problem. Or at least I hope I fix is a temporary problem. Um, but this is how you would just uh, send a rule directly to i6. And the beauty of that is it treats width as max width. So you would get the same thing this wouldn't be applied to any other uh, browser. Um, so, column widths. I'm talking about percentages. Why? So, we have these red areas at the bottom. Um, what I'm going to do initially, we've got some images there. I'm going to hide them because they're just going to get in the way for just now. Uh, but we'll most certainly come back to those later. Uh, so Okay, so you can see the columns, they're not really columns, they're just red blocks. But what we're going to do with those is give them a nice width. Well, 640, uh, let's try something like whoop, 200 pixels. There's three of them, that should fit nicely inside that space. That's kind of getting where I'm going for. And then I'm going to put a margin right, just to give them a bit of a gutter. And I'm going to say 20. Now, some of you are, oh, what else do I need? Let's see, this is the one. Okay, this is where the floating comes in, and all of a sudden they kind of stack up, except they don't entirely stack up. Why? Because 200 plus 20, 220 times 3 is 660. We've got a body size of 640. Uh, we need to kill the margin on the right-hand one. And we do that with that cheeky little last uh, class name we had in before. Okay. Um, there are more elegant ways of doing this. You can have uh, adjacent siblings, so you can have a left margin and then only apply it to div plus div or dot column plus dot column for adjacent sibling things. So you can use first child, last child, stuff like that. Again, there's not the full support for IE6, possibly IE7. And so, unfortunately, we're still labored with these kind of last classes. You could have a first class if you wanted to, but um, it's, it's, it's not ideal, but sometimes you need the extra markup. But that's looking as it should be. Uh, if we go back to this and resize it a little bit, Everything's okay, and then here's the problem. They're floating, so we don't have any horizontal scroll bars anymore, but they're kind of doing this weird stacking behavior, and there's no reason for that to happen at this size. So when I talked about uh, never have a fixed width, this is the exception to that rule, never have a fixed pixel width. Um, I'm going to change this to, I 
is where I think I've decided on 32%. And so we've got something that kind of works a little bit. The complication is I now also have to specify a percentage for the margin as well. If my numbers are correct, that's like 96 plus 2, 2%. That should be everything. And this pretty much is the layout that was in uh, the Picasa website we saw earlier. So we have three columns, nicely um, resizing. The gutter gets a bit smaller, which isn't ideal, but you're kind of stuck with that, really. Um, well, there are other nice ways around that with CSS3, but um, we may or may not get to that. Um, that's looking not too bad, actually. I, I could actually live with that. Um, just while we're here, I'm going to do something about the iframe. It's not terribly nice. And what we'll do, ah, get a width of 50%. Ah. This is where you find out why people don't do live demos so often. <laughs> or maybe they just practice, I don't know. Okay, and we're going to give it a float right. And we're going to give it a margin, which is going to top right. 20 pixels, 20 pixels. I hope that woman that did the first presentation didn't hear it because she's going to be a little bit angry with me. I wanted to sort of copy it from somebody else and try and figure out what it does later, Brigade. Um, okay, so that's okay. We've got a video in there that sort of sits nicely in the text and because it's got a percentage width, it sort of rescales as well. There are issues with the, the kind of black banding. You're changing the aspect ratio, which is one of these awkward things. and. There are solutions to that, none of which I particularly like. Um, but I think we can probably do something like this. Um, I think this is okay to make it a, actually let's make it a bit smaller. I think it's okay to give this a fixed height in this instance because it's not a container element. Um, and so content isn't going to escape that. Um, so I'm, I'm actually okay with that now. So that's, uh, that's part way there. I mean, it's responsive. It's not quite there yet, though. So um, the details for that, this is more or less just what I typed in, including the column dot last uh, fix. What next? Where do we make things nicer? Um, well, we now have no horizontal scroll bars, so we've more or less covered this thing. The images, we're going to come back to images, and this is one of these odd things where it, uh, it can be a little bit uh, not as you expect. So I'll go back to this. I'll turn them on, and we're going to see a problem again. Or at least I hope we are. Ooh. Okay, so the clue is in the graphic. These are 300 by 200. We wanted these at 200. Um, they're, they're just breaking out of the box. Um, there's not really a lot we can do about that. Or is there? So remember that max width, it is your friend. We can give it to images as well. And then all of a sudden, these images become fluid. So we're back to this liquid layout thing. So as the columns get smaller, they're not technically 300 by 200 anymore, although the original graphic is. And the weird thing, at the lower resolution with a higher pixel ratio, you get a crispness to the image that you actually don't see um, kind of on, on a desktop device. So there are benefits to sometimes delivering slightly higher resolution images. But again, we're, you know, this, this is looking good. This is getting close to responsive. Um, I think for the sake of readability, I never like it when the text abuts the edge of the screen like that. So in no particular order, I'm going to put a padding and I think I tend to default to 20 pixels on there. So it gives a bit of breathing space as well. That's, uh, that's starting to look like a web page, apart from the colors. I just feel like I should be eating um, Caribbean jerk chicken or something right now. <laughs> So images can be a problem. Why? Well, look and see what happens when I do something like this. I think a border is a perfectly nice thing to have around one of these. Uh, oh, let's do, go to my, my, let's get a nice big thick black border so we can see what's going on. All right, we've got the same thing. The images have escaped. Even though we've given them a max width, there's a problem where the width is being calculated on the content and not the border, and, and this is infuriating. There's no sense. 
this was one of the standards committee got together, deemed that this was an appropriate way of doing it, and never really looked at how people would probably be coding and trying to get their head around these things. Um, it's awkward because the, the bit that's jutting out is the thickness of both of those pixels either side of the border. Um, but the solution is a little unusual. Um, it's just box sizing for, oh, there, you go, there goes that joke. Um, the broken box model. I am going to put it to you that the size of that cat is defined by that cat's skeleton. For the purpose of this explanation, we're going to say the width of the cat is the width of the shoulder blades of the cat. The problem is, if you feed a cat too much, it gets a bit chubby. We've all seen the internet. This is what happens. Um, it's very difficult to put a cat in the box, depending on its dietary requirements, where you just want to travel with your cat and you want your cat box. Um, doesn't work currently in the classical box model thing. Um, what is a solution? Well, there is a solution. There is an alternative box model, a fixed box model. I'd like to share this lovely little image with you. Um, this is what you're looking for here. Um, as an aside, it is incredibly difficult, and I challenge you to find this yourself. You will not find stock photography with an occupied coffin. <laughs> <laughs> it just doesn't exist. So I'm going to ask you to imagine somebody you don't like very much lying in that thing with their arms crossed. That is your web content. That lovely little mahogany finish there with a the, uh, nice oiled stain is your border around it. You know, that's not going anywhere. And then your padding is that ridiculous silk frou-frou that they probably just take out before they burn you anyway. Um, <laughs> I, just, I just don't like it is. You want to hear this, right? Um, the beauty of this is the content is now, the, or, or the width of the containing element, if you like, including the padding and the border, is independent of how fat the person is. You, you give it the 200 pixels wide, or the 20 inches, whatever it is, and the coffin is just 20 pixels wide. It doesn't matter if uh, uh, your rich aunt has put on a bit of weight before her death, or it doesn't matter if you've kind of scaled back on the padding a little bit. The guy just needs to know what hole to dig to put this thing in, and this way you can tell them. So the way to do that is triggering this alternative box model, and you do it with, this is one I can never remember, uh, box sizing. So th this is relatively new. Um, unfortunately, I don't think it's supported in the iPad. Um, most modern browsers will have it. But you're basically saying take the measurement from the border on the outside, not from the content on the inside. And with that, you know, as if by magic, I can put the border up to, you know, ridiculous proportions and still it's not technically breaking the column. So we actually have, you know what, that looks like a, a resolution independent website. Okay, I'm really going to have to bang through this next point. Um, yes, that's great. You're probably here for the media queries, right? Um, this is the kind of the big thing. This is the really fancy new thing. The reason I sort of leave this to last and almost skim over it is this isn't the be all and end all because there's still enough browsers out there, potentially 20% or something, and usually older IE, that do not support them. What are they? They're like a conditional comment for uh, CSS. You're basically determining if, if this rule is met, and if it is, you apply. Uh, these CSS rules inside that kind of bracketed statement. And so a good example of that is uh, you can detect the viewport changing size. So my sort of classic thing is I tend to put one breakpoint in there. Um, and for me, it's mostly 480 pixels. iPads can handle full-size layouts absolutely fine. Nexus 7s, you probably want to kind of tweak it a little bit. You could possibly put a breakpoint at 600 pixels. Smartphones, definitely different. So this is where I do the final bit of magic to this website and say that's not readable, those columns are ridiculous, that's not a good browser, uh, mobile browser experience. So we're going to add a couple of elements to this. And so we're going to do this final, final media query at the end. I should uh, feel free to ask me questions while I type because I'm not sure I'm going to leave you any time for them at the end. Give me a screen and So we'll do something silly to begin with, like, 
All right, just to make it really obvious that this is kicking in, we'll do HTML uh, cyan. So if you want to get really psychedelic, you can see what's happening. We've got a default green background here. This cyan rule that I just added um, inside the media query is triggering when it hits the 480 pixel margin, and then you get this charming, see I'd call that teal, but again, it's in the code. Um, that, that's just a nice way of basically targeting mobile phones, smartphones in portrait mode for the most part. So changing color probably isn't the ideal scenario in these instances. What would be a good idea? Well, we talked about linearization and stacking content. So there's a couple of really, really simple things we can do. Uh, and I'm gonna do it to the columns. And first thing I do is turn off the float. So that looks okay. Um, they're stacked now. The problem is they're still the width that they were, 32%. Uh, so I can zip that back to 100%. Okay, that's looking a bit better. Uh, and I think there was possibly a margin on them before. We've stripped that off because it was possibly coming in a bit. Uh, so that's more or less what I would like to have to my columns. And those actually are 300 by 200 pixel uh, images now. I think for the sake of argument, I'll turn the, the borders off on those. So that actually is becoming quite readable on a mobile device. You're not too squeezed anymore. Um, the last thing I would do on here is inside the same conditional comment, we'll do something with the iframe, uh, kind of similar. Because again, that 50% width isn't really useful at 480 pixels across. So we're going to do the same deal with the width, 100%. Um, this is where sometimes at the smaller sizes, you can see that the aspect ratio is changing. You can actually match it a little better. And uh, OK, so we have this nice full screen thing. So that, to me, is a decent page. We've got liquid layout for all the browsers that don't support media queries and for the browsers that do. And it's pretty much universally the mobile browsers. They will give you this uh, linearized stack view. Um, yes, question from the back. Oh, yeah, sure. Um, Rupert, could you repeat the question? Thank you. Um, the, the question was, can we show an example of the... Um, I was going to do it with the inspect element. Um, the, the overflow uh, ellipses. So from memory, we could do it potentially with, we could fix a height on these columns. Okay, that's not enough. It's too much. Do, do, do. Okay, that looks good. Except I think I need to do that fix where I do an overflow. You know what, I'm going to get in a mess here. This is where I panic a little bit and it's not going to go quite right. Um, can I skip that just now? We can maybe look in the break because I will probably balls this up and that's not the finish I want to leave you with. Um, what I will do is suggest that, let me just undo those last couple changes. Do, do, do. Just to make this look half decent, I think the final thing I would do is font family layout. <laughs> oh, there's always somebody who wags her. And then <laughs> this, <laughs> this is my ghetto commenting. Um, <laughs> it works. <laughs> we all have deadlines. You never know how useful that comes in. So that actually looks like a website. Um, that will work nicely on your mobile phone. Um, it's pretty thumb friendly. Uh, it should never have a horizontal scroll bar. If it does, it's probably something breaking out of a container and you can do that with a, an overflow fix. You can put a max width on, something like that. Should be easy to uh, pick up on. And actually, what I'm gonna do is race through. There's, there's a few more examples, and kind of illustrated examples. This is available on the web. I encourage you to take it. It's an amazing thing with column count, which actually does away with the need full stop for uh, um, all these separate div containers. It's getting closer to some like InDesign. We have these, you know, just 
lovely kind of automated uh, column reflows and what have you. Um, hit area, sometimes the navigation is going to be different. Make things big for your thumbs, 44 pixels, the Apple developer menu says. Um, and don't do that thing where you just have this tiny hit array over an anchor tag and then padding on the surrounding element. Um, make the clickable element as big as possible because it even makes it easier for mouse users. Something called Fitz Law, I would encourage you to look up. Just make this stuff plain and simple. Look, look what uh, they've done with the Metro interface in Windows, you know, just big, bold. A um, little bit on the hidden graphics we've done previously and how you could potentially mark up your page to reflect that. Um, this was the thing with uh, sometimes product logos in particular are probably worth the extra resolution because on the Picasso site we have a 200 pixel wide logo that's much bigger and we shrink it down for uh, mobile and all that stuff is in there. Um, my contact details are here. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> this is quite a long presentation, isn't it? And um, I, I can send anybody links to this uh, presentation. It's also at brheny.com slash responsive because believe it or not we don't have any way of uh, sharing uh, PDFs externally on a, on a Google domain but um, yeah you can have a look at that as well um, thank you for your time please catch me for coffee later if you do have questions I know you probably want to carry on from here go out and make beautiful mobile websites thank you